Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are going to be learning about Azure App Services in this follow along. Uh, and it's a service that's supposed to make it easy for you to deploy web applications. I say supposed to because it really depends on your stack. Azure has more synergies with other stacks than others. So like if you're like me and you like Ruby on Rails, you're going to find a lot of friction with Rails and Linux. But if you're using something like Windows servers or Python or .NET, you're going to have a much easier time. Still a really great service. Just wish they'd make it a bit more broad there, but let's hop into it. So before we can go use that service, let's make sure that it's activated. And so we'll go over here and we'll go to Azure subscription. And then down below, we're going to go to resource provider. Now you'd think what you could do is just type in app services uh, and you'd be wrong because the, the service is under a particular provider. So if you want to figure out what provider it is, we can go um, Azure resource providers. And they have a page on documentation here that lists them all. So if I search for Azure App Services, it's under web and domain registration. So we're going to make sure this is registered. If we're using a custom domain, which we are not today, we need this one activated. So going back here, I will type in web and you can see it's registered. So if yours is not registered, go ahead and hit that. I believe this by default is generally registered with new Azure accounts. So I don't think that is an issue for you, but we'll go back up here, close these additional tabs and we will type in Azure app services and we will look for that service. So there it is. And we'll go ahead and hit add. Um, and so I'm going to give it a new name. I just made it a moment ago, but I'm going to try again and try to use the same name. So we're going to call this Voyager. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead and name this Voyager. And I already know that that is taken. So I'm going to type in Delta Flyer. And these are fully qualified domains, so they are unique. With Azure App Services, you can run a Docker container. We're doing code this time around. And what I like to use is Ruby. Um, but again, you know, if I want to use the CI CD, I'm not going to be able to use the deployment center with Ruby, so that is not possible. Um, and so we're going to go with Python and run either a Flask or a Django app. I haven't decided yet. I am in Canada, so let's go to Canada East. And uh, down below here, we have the plans. Generally, the plans will tell you the cost underneath. Look, you'll notice that it's loading, but I just want to show you that there are some discrepancies in terms of pricing. So if I was to go to Azure App Services pricing and we were to pull this up here, we can kind of see the pricing here. Okay. And if we scroll on down right now, we're looking at a premium V2 uh, and oh, no, I don't need help. I'm okay. <laughs> you'll notice that it's 20 cents per hour. So if I go here and do that times 730, because there's 730 hours in the year. That's $146. I believe this is showing me in USD dollars. Yeah. And in here, it's showing me 103 Canadian, which is lower. Um, so it could be that because I'm running in a Canada East region, it's the price is different. But you could imagine that if I had this at this cost at, uh, what did we say here, um, at 146 USD, to CAD, I'd actually be paying $182. So you got to watch out for that kind of stuff, but I'm pretty sure this is what the cost is. So just be aware that if you look stuff up in here, it's not necessarily reflective. So you got to do a little bit more work to figure that out. Uh, if we wanted to go here, uh, we cannot choose the free tier when we're using Linux. If we're using Windows, I believe we can use it. We're working with Linux today, so that's just how it's going to be. Um, for the B1, this is totally fine, but we want to utilize deployment slots. Deployment slots is an advanced feature of uh, the production version, and that's the only way we're going to be able to use it here. This is 20 cents per hour again, so I don't want to be doing this for too long. But I think what we'll do is before we do that, we can just do an upgrade to dev to prod so we can experience that. I'm going to go and just choose B1, okay? So we'll go next. Um, we do not need any application insights for the time being, and it will not let us, so it's okay. We'll go next, review and create, and we'll go ahead and create this resource here, and I will see you back when this is done. So um, our uh, resource is now set up. We'll go to resource, and now that we're in here, you'll notice if we hit browse, we're not going to see anything because we do not have anything deployed, which makes sense, right? Uh, so we're going to actually have to go ahead and deploy something. So we are going to make our way over to the deployment center. And uh, it's just going to tell us that we have yet to configure anything, and that's totally fine. We're going to go to settings. 
it'll give it a moment. And so the thing is, is that we're gonna need something to deploy. Um, I did not create an app, but the great thing uh, is in the Azure documentation, they have a bunch of quick starts here, all right? And apparently they have one for Ruby as well, but today we are looking at Python. Uh, and so they actually have an example repository for us here, which is github.com, Azure samples, Python docs, hello world. And I mean, I could go make a repo for you, but we might as well just use the one that is already provided to us. So I'm just gonna pull this up to show you what's in it. It's a very, very simple application. Even if you don't know anything about building web apps, I'm gonna walk you through it really easily here, okay? So we're gonna open up app.py. So we are using Flask. If you've never heard of Flask, it is a very minimal Python framework for creating web apps. Uh, very uninspiring uh, homepage here, but it gets the job done. It's gonna create a default route for us, which uh, we have there. We, we're gonna call hello here, and we're gonna have hello world. So that's all that's going on here. Very, very simple. And we have a requirements. This is our package manager. I, I don't know why Python uses TXT files. It's very outdated to me, but that's what they use. And here we have Flask. All right, so we're gonna use that repo it's a public repo, so it should be very easy for us to connect. So we'll drop down, go to GitHub. And uh, the next thing we need to do is authorize GitHub. All right, so I ran into a bit of trouble there because I could not uh, authenticate my uh, uh, GitHub account. But you know what? I just made another GitHub account, so that made it a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead here, hit GitHub, and we're going to try to authorize it. And so now I'm logged into this new one called ExamPro Dev, and we'll go ahead and authorize this application and we're now in good shape. This repository doesn't have anything in it, so um, if I want to clone something, I guess I'll probably have to fork that repo. Uh, so we'll give it a moment to authorize, and while that's going, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and uh, fork the example repo if I can find the link again here uh, myself. Uh, I believe it is. So that's still authorizing over there. I'm still looking for it. So uh, it was like examples or something, samples or examples. All right, so I found a way around the problem. I just made a new uh, GitHub account. So that's all I had to do. Um, and I just won't be using my primary account until I get my phone back. But um, so what we'll do is go hit connect. I'll hit authorize. And it didn't prompt me because it already connected to this new one called exam pro dev. You might have to put your credentials in here and it's gonna ask me to select some things. It's a new account, so there are no organizations, there are no repositories, there are no branches, totally brand new. So what I'm gonna to need to do is get a repo in there. So we'll just go ahead and fork the Azure Samples one. So that is Azure Samples, Python, Docs, Hello World. And if I type that right, we're in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and fork this repository. I'll say, got it. And then I'll move this off screen here. This is now cloned, you should see it cloned here. And uh, we'll go back here. And this probably isn't live, so there's no refresh button here. So we'll have to hit discard and we will give this another go here. And we will select our organization, which is our name. There is the repository. Uh, should be main branch, it's kind of outdated. I'm sorry, but it's called master, that's what it is. Not my fault, that's Azure's fault, okay. Um, and I think that's it. I don't know if we need a workflow configuration file. I don't think so. I'm just gonna double check here. No, I don't think so. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and save that. And so now we are set up for deployment.